Welcome to the MLG Hot Pockets Raleigh pregame show. I'm Chris Puckett, and guys, tonight is a historic event. We are kicking off MLG's 50th event here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and there's no better way to start the show than talking to the two people who made this possible. Right now, I am joined by the co-founders of MLG, Mike Sepso, Sundance D. Giovanni. Guys, big number 50. This is absolutely incredible. How are you guys feeling? Pretty good, man. This is amazing. I mean, it's a dream come true. Yeah, it's great. You know, uh, it's the turnout's great. We got new games. We got a lot of excitement going on. Um, I don't know that we ever thought we'd make it to 50. Honestly, I don't think we actually planned beyond three or four. We just were like, we're gonna give this a shot and see what happens. So it's great to be here. I was gonna say this is the 50th event. I remember the very first event. It was held in New York City, some trashy <laughs> land center, is somewhere in the East Village, and now we're here at the Big 50. I'm looking around, thousands of people are here, five different games, StarCraft, WoW, Halo 3, every single console is being played. Did you ever think we'd get this far? And where do you think we're going to be going? <laughs> I mean, we didn't, like Sunday said, I don't think we thought that far ahead. We always had big, a big vision for what this thing could be. Um, you know, and it's always been our idea to make it the next big sports league that's out there. So. I think there's a lot more in store for MLG. If this many people can support us to 50, I, I can't wait to see 100. Yeah, and I think you know the big thing for us is that the reason that we have been so successful is because we've always built on community. The idea was that you know Mike and I had a vision and had an idea, but the realization came into play very early that it was about kids, about people who want to play the games. It was about finding the stars, finding you know the guy who's going to be our Tony Hawk or our Derek Cheater, and you know the T2s, Walshies, and Ogres of the world who've been with us basically since the very beginning are a big part of the reason why most of these kids are here, uh, actually, is because they saw what was possible for those guys. And then you add things like the Dr. Pepper bottle and, and the sponsorships and the Red Bull deal and the TV show. And, and you know, it's really, it's crazy to say this when you look around, but we're still just kind of getting started because the next evolution of the company is going to be where we go from, you know, this crazy thing that a few thousand people come to to the next, you know, established sport that's never going to go away. Totally, guys. And, you know, we've been at this for seven years now, I think. Is that right? 2003 yeah, to 2010? Yeah, seven. Oh. Math. Amazing at that stuff. <laughs> but seriously, what were some of the most pivotable? Pivotable? Most <laughs> pivot, pivotal, pivotable, most memorable, most pivotal. I can't even say it. I'm going to quit on that word. <laughs> that word will not be used in my vocabulary ever again. So, no, seriously, most memorable moments ever in your mind, Mike. I, pivotable, pivotable <laughs> is up there. I, <laughs> that's a good one, live on air. Pivotable. Uh, I think, you know, Chris Puckett coming on board. I, what, you were like uh, 12 when we met you, right? So, <laughs> 16 and a half. <laughs> There's Close. been a lot of big moments. I mean, you know, on the business side, on the league side, I mean, seeing a lot of these guys, um, like Sundance mentioned, the Ogres and Walshie and T-Square, like just seeing them grow up and be, be a part of this. All the new guys that are big and you know new games coming in and everything it's just that's the nice thing about it it's always changing it's always fresh and um, big new things are happening all the time I think you know a big part of it for me is just getting all of these amazing sponsors to be a part of this I mean when we started out I don't think anybody believed that you could have a major league gaming you know just a big competition of video games and all like Doritos and Dr. Pepper and Old Spice these big old huge brands would become a part of it so that's been amazing for me so, Nance? Um, you know, I think it's the evolution of the company has been kind of amazing. And, and, you know, I've been involved in every different part of the company possible over, the, you know, over its lifetime. And um, we've done it. We've done it the right way, I think. You know, Mike and I, we've been friends uh, somehow through all this. Um, and we've, we've really, I think, the company is, is a, it's an extension of ourselves, I think, in the way that we operate and the way that we handle ourselves. So to see that, go, to go from with Mike and I being out there talking to people and them saying, you know what, come back to us when you've actually got a website or traffic or you've had a, 10 events. And, and then to go back to them and have them say, okay, you know what, this is real, this is amazing. And to look around and, as Mike said, to see these major brands. I mean, these are, you know, this isn't a bunch of small companies that are here. These are huge companies, which takes a lot to get people a large company to take a risk like, you know, sponsoring a video gaming tournament. But we've gone from that to being the biggest game on the planet when it comes to competitive sports. Um, and we've done it, I think, 
by listening to the community, by hiring the right people, by involving people from the community like yourself, like Adam, you know, Apicella, and all, all the people that we, we've uh, kind of met throughout this, this, you know, this process. So to me, it's just every year I kind of look at the progress and I look and I say, wow, it's, you know, it's another year under the belt. What's next? What's next? And, and it's, it's kind of incredible that we're at the 50th event. And it is, uh, it's, it's pretty humbling, actually. It's totally awesome. I seriously can't believe we're here seven years later. <laughs> Somehow. I have, How are I have we still your logo business? tattooed on my arm. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> no, it's not my fault, Linda. Yeah, yeah. I, didn't do that. I said he shouldn't. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining the show. I had the sure. idea last minute to bring you guys on. I thought it would be incredibly awesome. And according to uh, the Facebook fans, they agree. They're super happy to have you on here. And I have some questions from the fans. I opened it up here. And the first one is coming from Bianca in Toronto, who asked, what kind of risk did you guys take when starting this company? Oh, <laughs> well, uh, we, there we was went, a lot, and we had yeah. real jobs. I had, you know, we had another company before this. We um, <laughs> Sundance had a baby. There was a lot. You yeah. know, we we were. It was a big risk. I mean, we didn't make any money for a, a long time. Years. Um, years. I mean, you know, we, we still don't make it. <laughs> <laughs> Mike and I, like, you know, people in the beginning used to always get mad at us because they'd be like, where's my prize check? And Mike and I were like, well, we're out of money. We don't have <laughs> any money to give you yet. Because uh, we have literally invested everything we had in, in getting this idea rolling. And so what that came down to was it was really a, 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 we had to trust each other, but we also had to trust the idea and trust that the community would respond to it. So I think the biggest challenge was just reaching that point where you say, you know what, there's no turning it back. Mike and I were both so committed to this that we were basically running at the wall you know, as fast as we could, and we weren't going to stop because we believed we could break through the wall. And we did. And so um, it's rewarding that to achieve that, but that, become, that comes out of trusting each other and trusting your ideas. And I, I got a question here from Phoenix XR. He's asking officially, he wants to know whose idea was it to start MLG? <laughs> I don't know that we were sober enough to recall yeah, who came up with the exact think idea. Anyone. It was, uh, I don't know that there was any... You were brainstorming. Yeah, there wasn't like one spark yeah. of an idea. It evolved over, you know, yeah, over it time. It took a while. We were... I, I mean, think I came up with the name, though. I came well, you wanted to do the whole thing with the underground club yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Underground club thing. That <laughs> could have been a way Alan Iverson <laughs> was going to own a team. I remember that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, long story. Kind of glad he doesn't. All right, <laughs> just kidding, Alan. I would love you to sponsor me. Um, over all the years, guys, this one coming from Necrotal. Over all the years, what is your favorite game? What is What was your favorite game to watch and also play? Halo 1. I mean, Halo C, the original Halo to me was because I, mean, I told this story recently to you guys. Um, when we started, Xbox Live didn't exist, right? So it was, there were things, you know, Xbox was basically there, you know, you were playing in the room with people. You were landing until you got the ability to do Xbox Connect. So when we saw, we put some crappy projection screens up, tape logo banners to the bottom of it, started to watch people play. But when we started to see that, wow, this is actually exciting, people are screaming, this is, you know, it's 50 people, 100 people, 200 people, whatever it is, but people are getting excited. There was a, a moment where suddenly you realize that this can be really entertaining stuff. And then Halo 2 obviously upped the bar. And then Halo 3 has been better. And, Halo, and Reach is going to be ridiculous, but... You know, you go back to the, your roots, and I think Halo C will always help hold a special place for us. And we still play it in the office every day, two v two. I mean, you know that, and it's, you know, unfortunately Mike's horrible at it. But what can you do? <laughs> He's always put on my team. I don't know why. Always has to carry. No offense, Mike, but you're awful. Uh, <laughs> great shotgun skills, just like Ted Steele. All right, guys, our last question here is coming from Abdul Aziz from Saudi Arabia, who wants my to boy. know: Are we going to see MLG outside the U.S. borders? Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, there's already a lot of people watching this from all over the place right now. Um, if they're going to watch Puckett do a show from all over the place, you might as well go show up and run something big in their hometown. So, I mean, look, the, the thing that everybody always says is whether it's like Des Moines, Iowa or Saudi Arabia, people want us to bring it to where they live. So um, it's always been a big dream of ours to take this thing global, and I think that will happen eventually. All right, and guys, before you go, I got to make room for D-Mac and Scott for some reason. Oh. I, I'm just kidding. But uh, guys, can we just fire these guys and hang out here? <laughs> yeah, it'd be kind of fun. You guys want to commentate you're too? <laughs> you're out. He's gone. He's a good-looking kid. Just not nearly as pretty as Mike Sepso here. Um, do you guys have any final parting words for the fans who've been here since day one? <clears throat> Me? Me? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's all I really have to say is just thank you and keep watching and keep keep telling us what you want yeah i think you know I, again thank you is, is exactly what i want to say and, and 
When we do things, it's, it's for you guys. And um, what you need to do for us is support the people who support what you love. So Doritos and Dr. Pepper and Stride and Sony and all the people who are here at the, at the event and also that you see associated with the online content that we do. You know, go and support them because it, it makes a difference. You guys are incredibly powerful, and when you rally around something, it makes a difference, and that's what's going to get us to the next level. And and buy an MLG shirt and hat, please. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> buy two. <laughs> buy two. Buy two. Lids and hot topics. Lids and hot topics. Everywhere. And we'll be back with Scott and DMac to talk Halo Three.